Hello guys and welcome in RC Shims Hangar. Today I want to share a few tips that I collected flying my Vortex and flying FPV in general. The first Vortex tip being uh, to save weight. I flew a lot with heavier packs but the real acrofun on these little beasts of course comes from flying with lightweight 1300 milliamp four cell batteries uh, which have to be really high C so this beast doesn't destroy the batteries too fast. And you can also save weight by installing the Race Stage 1 kit that I bought. It's I think it's about $50 and it changes the motor arms to be a bit thinner. They are super sturdy but yeah, this saves some weight. The top plate is changed, the cam plate and which some of you guys might like the all the screws are changed to titanium ones that you can't destroy uh, with, with bad allen keys. So the weight savings are okay. Uh, they are advertised to save 40 grams but I managed to only save uh, 31 grams but that's that's a bit. Motor arms saved 12 grams, cam plate 2 gram, the top plate is 6 grams, all screws together were about 9 grams, so there were a total of 29 grams, but with, with, with rounding and with, with an uncertainty of the scale it's about 31 grams. I didn't see uh, drastical changes in my in my flight log regarding the, the flying time. You don't get one or two minutes more flight time. Not sure how much of an effect this has. Of course, if you fly acro and if you have to catch the copter, uh, there are different forces and yeah, some less weight can help you. It will fly faster and more agile. The second tip that I want to give you, but that didn't help me a lot. I have to confess this. After, I mean, I have many flights on this now. You don't want to have a motor failure because if one motor fails, the quad will go down and I plan to do more dives in the mountains and I don't want to lose another copter in the mountains. So, uh, after many flights, you should check your motor bearings. And I do this by just turning it. I will hold it to the mic so you hear it. Normally it sounds okay. This one is a bit weird. Ah, that's okay as well. But this one... I'm quite sure you hear this on the mic. This one has bad bearings again. And I say again because, yeah, I did this I changed this motor, uh, it wasn't too hard, it was a bit uh, a bit of, of screwing around with this ESC protector here. It sounded good after this, six or seven flights after I changed this motor. I flew nothing wild, I flew a bit higher, uh, took some aerial shots over a field and all of a sudden it dropped in one direction and I suppose it dropped because this prop here exploded in midair. So you can have all your motors in top condition but an ESC could fail which didn't or a prop could fail. I mean this prop was not not damaged or something. Maybe it was just bad material um, but again this was a drop of 150 meters onto uh, smooth grounds. Okay. I write all my crash analysis in the description below. These were DYS 5 by 4.5 3 blade props. They are glass fiber reinforced nylon props. They are quite stiff and it seems like they can have bad material and break in midair which is not a good thing. The Aeon way antennas seem to be quite durable. I mean it crashed also inverted and landed on the antenna in, in, in mud but it was just bent a little so these reinforcements work really well, really well so not much da uh, damage I just have to clean it and have to change the motors again. Uh, to the motor change uh, once you change the motor you see that you can change these plastic parts here only by desoldering the motors which makes these uh, different color pimp kits kind of annoying. 
So you only want to change these parts if you also change your motors or if you, you, you would not desolder your motors because you want to change a plastic part. That's, that's ridiculous. So pimp kit is nice, but changing these parts is not so nice. Okay, I have one more tip for you. Uh, uh, show my gear kind of tip. Until now I used this bag here. It's kind of a laptop, a, a bigger laptop bag. The nice thing was it had a cool compartment for the Taranis here and for the Fetchup goggles, enough space for batteries and some smaller bags in the front for some smaller tools and repair kits. So I used this bag a lot, but it's not big enough for uh, to carry all my stuff and gear and I want to be able to have all my gear in one backpack so you can hike to a cool spot. I bought this, yeah, downside is it's, it's heavy, trolley style backpack at IKEA. I think it was $50 but I'm not sure. Okay, so I want to show you why I chose this, this trolley backpack here. You could also mount this little tiny backpack for additional GoPros or stuff like that. But I opted to leave it away to save weight. I then used these straps here to mount some Velcro. Have the quad mounted here like this easily. Another thing that's nice, it has a stand. A supporting stand down below so it, it stands quite nice and you will have all your batteries in it so it is heavy you also have this handlebar here you can mount the video receiver on top so you don't have to carry an extra tripod or uh, I use this little gorilla tripod style to mount the video receiver wherever it just works on a branch or on, on my car bag itself has more space than you will need and this really changed uh, my thinking um, I now have a cool and it's I got it from Hobby King it's like 10 or 11 dollars a cool Taranis bag which holds the Taranis and the Fetchark and some spare batteries and antennas so that's a really good protection for your transmitter, transmitter bag. And this is a little Gorilla tripod with the FR632, a really decent video receiver. And I could just, just mount this thing here in a second. And it's the same height as this aluminum uh, tripod gave me, so it's not a downside at all. Yeah, you save some weight. I mean weight, you already have a lot of weight with this big trolley, that's, that's for sure. And then you just have, I have one cable to the battery and one cable to my goggles and I'm good to go. I have this little bag with aerials, yeah, with my standard SPV and with helico antennas on the outside here I store the battery with the correct plug for the thing and this video cable to the, go uh, to the fetch up so the main goal is to be able to fly anywhere fast and have full video range with not just using the goggles internal video receiver, which might be okay for mini quads. And I also have my trusty landing mat, which I also have here on the wall. Uh, and I have some tent packs. And then I have this little bag just for my batteries. Those are not all my batteries at the moment. I have to charge a few. And recently I bought these Turnigy A spec 1300 milliamp four cells. And I think they work quite nice. Of course I also have a battery checker in there. 
So yeah, that's all. And that I think this really works nice. In the front here, I have just some spare props, my tool set, which is a few screwdrivers and stuff. That's it. Of course, I have a little bag with storage cards and a little uh, bag for the GoPros as well. One cool feature of this trolley, you can convert it to a backpack by taking out the straps here and attaching them here. Yeah, really nice gear bag. Looking forward to use it more often. Okay, so now with some noise on the outside and me having said all I wanted to say for today, check out the race stage kit. Uh, it's some work, but saves you 30 grams. Check out this lovely transmitter bag and trolley backpack situation. Yeah, and also my friend Arthur at Banggood asked me to promote his video. They have some kind of sales campaign right now. If you want, check it out. I mean, it's honestly, it's a lot of toys there. But I also spotted the Immersion RC 600 5.8 video transmitter there for $44, which is quite cheap. And also they have the Aon Way antennas that I like to use, so check it out. At least this stuff is quite cool. <laughs> Other than that, the video is just funny. Check it out. Okay, so thanks for watching today. This was just a short update. If you have some questions, comments, leave it in the comments section. If you have some uh, advice why I crashed, or if you have another theory of why it crashed, yeah, feel free to discuss it. I will maybe switch to other props. I also got this DYS two-bladed bullnose ones. Not sure if they are any good. And I also got the non-bullnose DYS. They don't feel as rigid. Maybe they don't break so easy. I will try these maybe next. Okay, so thanks for watching. Bye.